2.0 liter engine and uh, this vehicle was having a, a couple of problems, a couple of symptoms. Uh, number one, it was starting to overheat a little bit. Number two, the customer was noticing a smell, uh, a noticeably different smell than normal. And uh, coolant, when it leaks, it sort of has a sweet smell to it. So uh, with those two symptoms, uh, we knew to try to look for a coolant leak. So we went and started looking at the basics. We started looking at the radiator hoses, started looking around the thermostat, around the water pump, around the intake, anywhere around the engine where coolant could possibly be leaking. Uh, we also looked at the coolant level. Obviously, if the coolant's leaking, the level should be low. Well, we looked in the cooler, coolant overflow bottle, and it was virtually empty. There was nothing in there. So we knew it was leaking. Uh, we took a much harder look at it, and we found where the leak was. It's actually behind the thermostat housing. Um, and uh, the thermostat housing basically holds the thermostat, and it's all plastic. And uh, so it's very difficult to show you on the vehicle, so we'll show you the actual part. Uh, this is a brand new part. It's made by Ford Motorcraft. And uh, we sell this at autopartsdirecttou.com. It's a very common part to, to fail. And what it is, it's basically a, a plastic housing. Uh, it's got a, a, a hose here for one of the heater hoses. It's, this is the top where the uh, thermostat uh, top housing goes. And then down here, this is the opening for the thermostat, where the thermostat will sit in there. And where it was leaking, we took a mirror, because this is how it looked to you if you are looking on the vehicle. And where it was leaking was on the back. So we took a mirror, we put it right around uh, behind it, and you could actually see this seam right here is where it was actually leaking. So uh, with visual proof, we knew what to go after. Got a new part, and it's, uh, it's very simple to install. Um, you'll have, uh, we got the new, the new housing, got a brand new thermostat, it's kind of silly to go through this and not put a brand new thermostat on. We got a new thermostat gasket, and we got a new gasket for the upper housing that fits there. So basically it's three parts, uh, then we're going to need a little bit of coolant. Uh, we got some cleaner just to clean up after ourselves. Very basic tools are needed, again our mirror was used to determine where the leak is. A uh, pair of pliers to use to uh, remove the hose clamps, a small flathead screwdriver, a half inch drive ratchet or a, a quarter inch drive ratchet, an eight millimeter socket, and a nice long extension. This extension is a little long. Um, we're using it just to keep the view of the video on there. And we're using this all, which basically helps us get the hoses off. So that's all the tools needed. And we got a rag here. And we'll just jump in here and show you how to replace this. Uh, first thing we're going to do is loosen the hoses that connect to this housing and it's a pa pair of hose clamp pliers just like this, nice, a nice pair you can clamp onto the hose clamp and these are spring clamps so they're very easy to move around. You just uh, get a hold of it, move it up, get it off of where it's sealed onto the, the uh, housing and we got one more over here on this heater hose so we lifted that one up. We did a little bit of work before the video just to make the video nice and quick. Then you work the hose off. You may get a little coolant dripping out here. This one's empty, so it's not leaking at all, which is great. So we got this hose off. Now we'll work off the heater hose, which that pulls right off. Then we have the coolant temperature sensor. This temperature sensor does not screw in. It actually has got a little C-clip that holds it into place. Not great to see on the video there, but it's basically got... A clip that you push in and uh, you push in and pull it off. And if you can get a better view of that, right here is the clip and if you push it in with your finger you can see how it will disengage and then you pull the connector off. Never pull it by the wires, always pull it by the connector. If you pull it by the wires you can actually yank the wire out. So then we're down to the coolant temperature sensor which again just just sits in there freely and moves. And if you look closely there's a little C-clip which I'll pop off with a little flathead screwdriver. And you want to watch where you're prying on because if you pry on the coolant temperature sensor and break it, you'll need to put a new one on. C-clip looks like that. Basically snaps in and holds the coolant temperature sensor in place. With the sensor out, you can see where it goes. It actually snaps right into here. And that's what holds it into place. Very simple. Yeah, a lot of other vehicles, it actually screws down into place. This one doesn't. This one's just got a clamp. So we're going to place that to the side. 
And basically all we've got left here, uh, we've got a wiring harness we got to get out of the way maybe. Yeah, maybe not. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six eight millimeter bolts to remove. Okay, so we got the three bolts off that are holding it down. We're going to go ahead and pull this uh, off the vehicle. We do have it uh, attached by the bypass hose, but it will pull out of the bypass hose. Also, we got two wires that are kind of in the way. We, we could probably get them out with, without them, um, but it's just a little clip. You pull this one out, flip it up. This wire here, um, it's actually got a little, like a, one of those Christmas tree push pins, and you pull it right out of the metal thing. That'll just give you a few more inches to, to play with to, to get access at this thing. So basically, um, we got the access to it. We'll start pulling this thing up, pull it out of the bypass hose, take it all out as one whole piece. And again, right there you can see definitely where it was leaking. If you can. These again are eight millimeter uh, bolts. So we'll break them all loose. Should get them loose. You can buy a new one of these. Uh, we actually sell a kit where you get all three pieces as one. Uh, it's however you want to buy it. This piece does not necessarily have to be replaced, uh, replaced yet because there's nothing wrong with it. It is plastic. It's the same age as this. So uh, it's only, I think it's about $28, $30, so it's up to you if you want to get a new one of those. We're going to go ahead and reuse it. There you can see the old thermostat. It's important to note the position of how it was inserted. Uh, we have had every once in a while we get a vehicle in where the, someone installed their own thermostat, but they actually installed it upside down. And you may not even notice it um, uh, until you, until you try, try driving it. Some of them you can't, some of them you can. So note the position of it. Um, also, just take another glance, make sure the part is identical, which it is. We'll go ahead and put the old one out of the way. Um, one more thing, though, take note of where the O-ring is, because you may not be you may not be sure of where the O-ring goes. The O-ring may go under it, may go on top of it. The original one was on top of it, so we know we're going to put the original one on top of this one. It's great do-it-yourself stuff to do this stuff, but one key ingredient to a do-it-yourselfer is being aware of what's going on and slowly looking at everything making sure you don't overlook something. Something as simple as that, if we went ahead and pulled this thermostat out, took the o-ring out and laid it down, when we go back to put it back we may not have remembered that. So you can turn an easy job into a much more difficult one by rushing through it. So take a few seconds to, to stand back and look at everything. So we'll take our new, new thermostat.